All right, well all the edges have been rounded over both sides. I failed to mention I also did the holes here. I was going to do those. So those have been softened up as well. So now the legs are actually complete. I'm going to move back onto the top and do some rounding. All right, I'm going to round over all these edges as well. Just going to kind of give you an idea on what I'm doing. From the bottom, I'm going to run this edge all the way down, over, and back up. Terminate here. I'll come in this loop here and do this entire square. I'll do the same thing over here. I'll go down this edge, over and back. Then I'll flip it up onto the front. I'll do these edges like so down to this point. And then I'll do the sides, the back. I'll flip it over and do the top. So basically any edge I can hit is going to be rounded over. Okay, well, I've got all the edges rounded over now. I need to make a correction. I kept talking about quarter inch round overs and wanting a five sixteenths. I don't know what I was thinking. I was using an eighth and I would like to have had a three sixteenths. So just a little correction there. I did not use a, a quarter inch. I could probably get away with one of those on the legs, but out here I would kind of start getting too close to my countersinks. So I did go with a eighth inch round over bit on that just for reference. So it's at the stage right now where it's about time to mock up the legs and figure out our cross support brace. Well, all right, well, we're mocking it up. I've got one of the legs installed to show you how it will articulate. And then the material list, uh, there's six washers, a two and a half inch bolt. I did have to take a two and a half inch and cut it down to two and a quarter. I figured I was going to have to. And then two nylocks. So this one over here has been done. Uh, it's not complete, but the leg will fold up like this and then it will scissor out and then it will contact a stop. So that's what we're shooting for right there. Basically like a TV, TV tray, I guess. So I'm going to start putting this together in real time. Uh, I have my pieces laid out here with the arrows pointing towards the back. So they'll match up. The one that has the offset hole actually is going to sit right here. So I'm just laying it down this way. And then this one, of course, will just sit on top. So we're going to start with the scissor right here. Uh, very simple bolt washer. Come up through here. One more washer. Set this on. one more washer and I'm going to pivot it so I can push that bolt up and start putting the nut on and I'll just use two socket wrenches and tighten this up I'm not going too crazy with it I'm just getting it nice and snug about like that and it still should be able to scissor without any problems so everything's looking good. So we're going to drop it in just like so. I'm leaving it back just a little bit for now. The two and a quarter inch bolt washer. I'm going to slip a washer. I'm going to start the bolt in and slip a washer on. Now I'm going to scissor this up. I'm about to hit the camera there. I'm going to pivot this up just like so and just bring this one towards us like that so I can put this together back here. Just like so. One washer, one nut. Having to do this blind. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll just tighten it up. You probably can't see what I'm at right now. There we go. So these will come together. And it will lay down. Just like so. There will be a couple cross braces down here that we'll put on later. Uh, at this stage of the game, it's about time to put the sliding stop in, so I've got to work that out. 
uh, make a couple cuts on it and I'll describe that as well. well I think I'm going to deviate from my chicken scratch design a little bit uh, it looked good on paper but with the material I'm using I'm kind of switching it up what I was originally going to do with parts number 11 was they were going to be glued together like this and I was going to take off 60 degrees off each side and that was going to give me the range of motion I I had needed to stay within these frame rails down here which I've taken out so it didn't interfere with anything but after kind of looking at it and getting it in here because I just had this pulled over this actually stops right here but there, it's not up against a block here what was running across here was going to be supporting all the weight right here so I think I'm going to change my design a little bit and instead of doing that I'm going to try to work out something more like this like a, a T-beam and I'll feel a little bit better with that and depending on how narrow I need to make this at least I hopefully I can get one or two fasteners in here as well as a couple there and this one definitely will be glued and screwed so these parts are still going to work but they may be altered uh, as well as that 13 and a half on these seems to be about a quarter inch long I must have miscalculated somewhere but hey I can make them shorter so that kind of makes that first cut problem kind of go away so I'll get this sorted out and note what I'm doing and what I've done uh, I feel pretty pretty good so far everything seems to work according to plan this would work but I'm just changing it up from a design aspect a little bit well okay since we're on design on the fly phase part 7 uh, I'm going to kind of give an idea on what I'm doing here to try to determine the shape and my constraints on what I need here to allow this to move back and forth without any interference so hopefully you can see this this edge right here this is where the end of this point should stop so basically I'm just moving it over a little bit to where it contacts that and I'm going to scribe a line from here up so I'm just getting in here and scribing a line now I'll correct this line and make sure it goes all the way out to both ends and then I will find the midpoint and I will scribe a line perpendicular to that so it will come from the midpoint up 90 degrees out this direction that's the next thing I'm going to do okay well, I've cleaned up my scribe line made sure it went out to both ends and rather than try to just measure the midpoint of this line and then make a 90 reference off that I'm just going to bisect this line so I don't really have a hard point here so I'm going to grab just to where that round over was and I'll just scribe a line through here hopefully that shows up and I'll do the same from this section here and then I'll just simply come in and connect these two points and that will find the midpoint of my line as well as create my perpendicular line which is what I'm hunting for so right about there it moved of course find that again very hard to do things like this when you're trying to keep your head and hands out of the way alright so ignore this little section right here so that's our reference that we're hunting well alright I have those two lines referenced and I have it back in where it is going to sit uh, what I'm doing now is I'm taking part nine which happens to be three and a half inches and I'm just setting it back towards the back corner over here to act like a prop for part eight and I'm just bringing part eight in and setting it right here like this and I'm propping it on the back corner 
with part nine. So I'm just taking a visual down here and seeing how everything is lining out. And it looks like my bisected line is perfectly parallel to this right here. So this is part 11 which would go here and I'm actually going to set this on two parallels so this is in essence a quarter inch up from the base that we're looking at right here and I'm just going to set that in there and look at it and the way this would sweep out is this edge right here will actually kind of ride this and may even become taller so I'm going to make a reference here right here and I'm going to try to hit the bottom as well right there okay so hopefully those lines showed up So what I'm going to do at this point is set this piece on here and I can see the lines under here. You probably cannot. I can see the lines that I just referenced. I'm going to watch this and I'm going to sweep the leg all the way back and then rotate it down and make sure none of these surfaces contact anything. And if everything looks good. I'll re-establish a midpoint between this corner and the corner I just drew and we'll make a new line across here and that will be our center of our T-brace. I hope that makes sense and I will also need to determine how tall this T-brace can be because as this goes back and starts to roll down we're at a different arc angle right here so I just I want to make it as close as I can to get as much meat out here as I can but yet I still don't want any interference so this is what I'm going to look at right now I'm going to watch and make sure that this point here at the corner I just drew as well as this one on the bottom right here along its length of its travel does not contact anything and I don't believe it will all right, well I checked the sweep of that travel and everything looked good. So now I need to bisect this point and this point and make a new reference line. So I'll do that right now. The final work here, this stuff won't be necessary. I'm just working this out on the fly. So that is my new line right here. I'm going to have to move this. Hopefully that's still in the frame. This is what we're going for now. This will be our theoretical center of that T. You know, once I get everything noted here, I will uh, let you know what I'm doing and it'll just be simple dimensions you know this is part of a design phase here that I'm working on uh, one that I, th I had worked out but like I said I'm changing it midstream so I'm just trying to get rid of that old mark so that is my new theoretical center right there based off of spacing this up uh, a quarter of an inch so now I'll see what's next